Hey guys, my name is Kern and welcome back to Octane Street, the road here on YouTube that never ends. And as you guys can see, we got the car propped up right here in the driveway, ready to go. And that's because today I wanted to make it a little bit of a quicker video. You guys said uh, in the past on a previous poll on the channel that you guys want to see more DIY installations. And that's what we're doing today, inner and outer tie rods. Now I did tackle this already a couple days ago. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get the inner tie rod off. There's a uh, bolt on here. Oh, this one right here, the inner tie rod itself. I couldn't get this off, but now we got a tool under our belt, which is right here. It's an inner tie rod tool. Uh, links to everything I use in this video, by the way, guys, as always, will be in the description below. So if you guys want to do this yourselves on your own Mustang or own vehicle, if you guys want to get what I use, you guys can always do so by looking in the link in the description below. So this is pretty much grips onto this. You tighten it up and then you kind of crank it off. So I have some extensions, a breaker bar. So that should be no problem this time around. Again, I already uh, cracked the, the lugs loose on the wheels. I'm gonna take them off and this is gonna hopefully be a speedy uh, re and re. So let's see if we can get it done. Let's head to taking off these wheels. Alright guys, so we got the wheel off now. I'm going to be tackling this cotter pin, uh, pretty much unbending it with a long needle nose pliers, pull it out and then there's a castle nut. I believe it's an 18 millimeter. So I have an 18 millimeter deep socket here. Uh, take that off and then we're going to tap off the outer tie rod end. Um, but just before we do all of that, we do need to uh, crack this um, jam nut loose. So to do that, because I almost forgot. Okay. There, it's cracked loose. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna get rid of the cotter pin here. Come on, there we go. Holy, all right, got the cotter pin, need to keep that safe. So we got the castle nut off. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it back on, thread it back on, but upside down. That way, right till it meets the stud, the end of the stud. And I'm gonna try and just give it a light tap. Give it a light tap on the top here. All right, and we got it loose. Perfect. So I'm assuming I, I think it came out that easily because it's new. I just put this one on a couple days ago, um, but I'm redoing it again because we ran into some complications. So I want to make sure I have the cotter pin safe for that. I'm just going to actually keep them together right here in my metal tray. And guys, this is the issue right here. Look how loose this goddamn inner tie rod moves. It's it's not supposed to be like that. I'll show you guys the new one right now. This is the new one here. And even if you try and put all your pressure, it doesn't move at all. It's supposed to be very firm and only move under the pressure of the vehicle when you're turning. So that's a huge issue. And with that being said, I'm gonna twist off this new outer tie rod end that I already replaced. It should be 22 spins. I counted last time, but I'm gonna count again just to make sure. So let's spin it off. One, two, three, four, five, six, 22, and 23, perfect. Now I'm gonna clip off these zip ties that I put on as temporary clamps using my cutter pliers here. All right, so there's that one. And now this one's a little harder to get. You don't want to damage this boot because your new tie rod kit does not come with a new boot. So there goes those. And now what I want to do is slide this down here, just like that. And you guys can see if you come over here, you can see that the old inner tie rod 
is super, super loose, just like that. So I'm actually going to take off this jam nut here at the end of the inner tie rod, right? And then we are going to take off the boot because we're reusing the boot. And then the part where I got stuck last time, which is this right here, I couldn't get that off. But now we got a tool in our arsenal, so I'm excited and curious to see how that works. And we'll go from there. Red's on, adjust it. Like that. Honestly, I could even do it like in between, like right here. It feels like it has a good bite there. Now this tool apparently could be used on any type of inner tie rod joint, whether it's uh, completely rounded or what have you. As long as you tighten it down. A couple cranks there, a couple here. I feel like I could feel it biting down into the tie rod which is what I want. So I have it on a little bit sideways, uh, a little bit wonky. I'm gonna see if that works. I have some extensions to go in here. This is a 3 8 connector. So I have a half inch drive connected to a half inch extension right here. So half inch ratchet connected to half inch extension, connected to a down step from half inch to 3 8 connected to a 3 8 extension and this should be just fine to crank it off so let's see actually you know what I don't know why I'm using the, the ratchet I said I have a I said I have the breaker bar guys so let's get the breaker bar we got the breaker bar extended to all those or connected to all those now let's see if it comes undone. Man, it's really on there. Wow! That thing was tight. That thing was extremely tight. But we did break it loose, which I think now means we can get it by hand. Holy! That thing was on there, guys. Hopefully you guys saw that properly. There was no way I was getting that off by hand. Honestly, thank God for this tool. Straight up. Straight up, thank God for this tool. And now I'm just gonna twist it off. Wow, that worked miracles. Guys, that's a $30 tool and it just saved me a world and lifetime of headache. Now the only downside about a tool like this is the teeth eventually will wear on it. So this is good if you're your you know, garage mechanic where every now and again you're gonna change something like this. But if you work in a shop, while well, you can get some use out of it, it's not gonna last you a long time. And we actually got the old one completely out, guys. Look at that. Take a look at the power steering rack. Absolutely sick. This is exciting. Guys, I tried for like a whole hour or longer last time using all types of monkey wrenches, plumber wrenches, adjustable wrenches, pliers, locking pliers. I tried everything under the sun to use my own strength on the ground. Couldn't get it off. Breaker bar did quick work. And you guys can see the grip that that tool had on the end of the inner tie rod here. And look at this, guys. No pressure at all. This is why my car was clunking etc every single time i'd go over some type of bump i'm curious to see how that side is because that side is in better condition than this side so i'm, I'm just super excited to get this off guys we, we haven't made it here so far and let's keep it rolling let's keep it rolling all right guys so the good thing about moog parts is it comes with some uh thread locker already on it so all i'm gonna do is literally just go ahead and get it in there and start threading it in Try and crank it as much as I can with my hand. All right, and with the thread locker, that should be fully good to go. Now we do have our 
boot here that we're reusing. Put this right here, and I'm going to clamp it down. Go over. Come on. Ah, beautiful. Just like OEM. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Perfect. All right, got that on. And now we got the new jam nut because the move parts come with a new jam nut. And I'm gonna put this on roughly where I think the tie rod will go. The outer tie rod that is. Right about there looks good. I need to turn that to me. Okay. I do some people put, I think, anti seize on here. Now, would I want anti seize on that? I feel like I would. Oh, I guess I'm a Google. Do I want anti seize on the threads of the outer tie rod, inner tie rod? All right, it's Google time. All right guys, so just like I thought, you do want to put a tiny bit of copper anti-seize on the end of the inner tie rod here. So I'm just gonna put it like that. And let it thread on there. That should be enough. A little bit will do the trick, just to keep it nice and loose for the next time. And with that being said, it's time to put this bad boy back on. 23 spins, boys, 23 spins. Okay. That's one, two, three, four, five, twenty-two. There we go. All right, and now I want to give that a nice snug tight. bad boy back up in here there we go okay now we get the castle nut which is right here castle nut and cotter pin and let's just go ahead and do that. And now I want the castle on top. Now, I want to torque this nut down to 59 foot-pounds. And for that, we have our EP Auto half-inch drive click torque wrench. So links, of course, in the description. Now, I have a, a big torque wrench for tires and stuff like that, but this one is perfect for uh, smaller situations like this. Could this fit in here? Yeah, I could do it from out here. And this one, it works differently from the one I have, so I think I have to unscrew this. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, this is foot pounds. That's 
50. All right, 60 foot pounds, so that should be perfect. I think I have to tighten this back. I'm not entirely sure how to use this one, but that seems about appropriate. And let's torque this castle nut down. This seems like seems like it's not actually torquing it, but rather just continuing to go. I wonder if there's a way I could test it. There is a way I could test it. So sometimes what you gotta do is just Okay, so it does click as intended. Those are torqued to 100 foot pounds, so if it didn't click, this thing would definitely be way off. It's rocker. But seeing that it clicks, it means we keep going. As tight as this castle nut feels like it is already. I don't make the rules, I just abide by them. pounds feels like a billion at least when you're dealing with such a small nut like this man all right well it's torqued down whether it's torqued too much or not I'm just following the rules <laughs> let's get that cotter pin in there even though I feel like it's not gonna need it being torqued down so much Bend that sucker. Okay. So this side is officially done. I'm curious to see if the car is going to immediately drive better since this was the problematic side. The one last thing I actually need to do actually is put one zip tie here on the end of the boot so that doesn't come sliding off. And then once we do that, we're all good to go. So I'm going to zip tie that up, put the wheel back on, and actually I might adjust the height of the coilovers real quick as well actually in the front. And then we'll put the wheel back on, do the same thing on the next side. See ya a few moments later all right guys so i just finished up this side as well the car is completely done both inner and outer tie rod ends completely finished 100 percented and now is the moment of truth guys it's the time to actually drive the vehicle will everything blow up will everything fall apart i torqued down what needed to be torqued uh, thread locked what needed thread locker anti-seize what needed anti-seize this is the moment of truth guys let's see did we fix that big issue with the steering for this vehicle or do we just make things worse? So let's go ahead and find out, take it for a test drive, and give you guys my thoughts on the road. All right guys, so I took a quick shower and now we are gonna be driving the car for the very first time. Let's see how it goes. Gotta get out the driveway first. Um, car's rolling, which is good. Definitely a good sign. Steering wheel seems straight for the most part, which is also pretty good. Okay, we're turning. <laughs> Just narrate everything I do. 
all right so the biggest problem was that the steering wheel kept pulling to the right after every little bump it didn't pull to the right at all there and that was a big bump so let's see i'm so scared to like let go because i'm so used to having to hold it still so this the alignment is off which is to be expected yeah the, the steering wheels the car's pulling to the right even though the steering wheel is like towards the left um so it's kind of hard to tell what exactly is going on with the steering just at a first glance because the, the alignment is off so i'm not sure if the car is like pulling to one way or, or the other i'm trying to see if it could just drive straight with my hands off the wheel it still wants to go a little bit to the right not nearly as much though because right now yeah the car still wants to go to the right naturally i don't know if if an alignment could just do that because Let's see, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold it uh, straight uh, and see what happens. Because even with the, the old inner outer tie rods, if you're holding the steering wheel straight and you go over a bump, you'll feel the steering wheel tug to one side or the other. So I'm gonna see if I feel that same tugging um, while holding it. I felt a tiny, tiny tug after that bump. Which again could be also normal because these are bumps, so this, the wheels can shift a little bit. The alignment is definitely out of whack, though. Let's see. Got a little bit too much traffic here, more than I'd like. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it pulls. Uh, to one side or the other more than it used to it, it definitely feels like it pulls less which is great because i at the very least it feels like we didn't ruin the car and we did in fact make things a little bit better so overall just based on this i'm gonna give an update in a future video when the car gets actually a you know a, 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 an alignment done again and i'll give you guys my thoughts you know again in a future video but the car is turning fine the steering wheel actually feels a little bit stiffer, which I like. It feels, I think the word I'm looking for is responsive, but in a very weird way. Like I feel more connected. Like when I turn it, is I, this all, all might be in my head, as I say with every video after I do an installation. But when I turn it, I feel like it's on the road a little bit more, which is nice. Like it feels like it's doing what I want it to do, despite the alignment being out of whack. So that I'm gonna call a success. We didn't ruin the car. I do believe we fixed the major uh, part of the issue. And with that being said, guys, this has been one hell of a fun video to make. Uh, this was my first time changing inner outer tie rods, and it went pretty well. Obviously, there was some hiccups here and there. Nothing that you know, picking up a new tool for the for the toolbox uh, couldn't fix. So yeah, that's all for this video, guys. I'm gonna call it call it call it a success. We didn't need no outside help this time around, which is great. I love to see that here on the Octane Street channel. Um, and with that being said, guys, be sure to subscribe if you guys enjoyed what you watch. Hit that like button as well. But more importantly, hit that notification bell so that you guys can ride shocking with me on the next video. My name's Kern. This is Octane Street. I'll see y'all later.